He needs one. Oh. Mm. I think. I don't know if you Oh, yeah, boy. I okay. Dude, I'm freaking look. Check it out. He's about to just look right off. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe. For those of y'all that follow me and have been following me for a long time, you know I have a love-hate relationship with bow fishing. But guess what? We want some bait for sharks. We want some bait for big goliath grouper, for our stone crab traps, and we want to eat some stingray. So we're going bow fishing for Stingray tonight. Right here in Stewart, Florida, I got my good buddy Adam with me. My girlfriend Kelly's behind the camera. So I'm gonna be up to bat and Adam. We're also gonna do some fish gigging. I got my Gator Pro gig and my Outrigger Outdoors gig. One thing that I'm gonna do in this video that's different than the rest that I've done on my new Pro Drive, tomorrow in the light, I'm gonna do a rundown and show you how we installed the lights, how my trolling motor's installed, what the storage is on this boat, I'm gonna pretty much give you a full-fledged rundown on this Pro Drive 1856. Also, go over my light, my light bar that I have behind Kelly, which is shining on me right now. Just show y'all how I designed this boat because to me, now that I've had it for three months, they don't come any better. I've done everything you can imagine out of it. It, it still looks like it did the day we bought it. So, with further ado, let's go bow fishing. Oh! Ooh, mullet. <laughs> Make a jump. One thing I can tell y'all is this is the first boat I've ever had like this, set up like this. I wouldn't change a thing. The only thing I would change is I'd add lights on this Minn Kota remote, but that has nothing to do with the boat. Look at the swirl right there. What was that? We crappie fish. We've done pretty much everything you can do but frog gigging. We're gonna do a frog gigging video on this boat soon. Look at these mullet. These mullet would be so good for the trap. All right, here goes nothing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't even think he knows he's hit yet. He's I think like, you pinned him to the ground. What the <laughs> heck just happened? Oh, perfect shot too. This is going to be crazy. Dang, he's pulling hard. The scary thing about these is you don't want to get spined. We should probably have a gaff. But do you have a gaff? No. One thing I got though is power pole. So you can't pull us around so much. It's bark. We'll definitely come back and get you. Oh yeah. You wanna stick a gig in him? I'm gonna try to get him right in that cooler. You do not wanna get stabbed by one of these. Over the rail and in the pail. Now we got stingray tacos, awesome stone crab bait, and possibly even a goliath grouper bait or a shark bait because we just saw a massive shark in this little lagoon. Well, we got dinner. We got a lot more to go though. Oh, you got that joker right in the noggin. Oh. Oh. Oh, just one, he just jumped! Just go. jumped, guys! Thanks, plane, for coming over right at the wrong time. Got a big stinger. Everybody clear? Everybody's clear. I'm not going out like Steve Irwin. Alright, now what do we do? 
Wow, Kelly, good Kelly, shot. reach in there and grab him by that pointy thing right there. <laughs> she, she, she just kidding. Did. I was kidding, I was kidding, I was kidding. All right, let me see these Dankos. No longer. Check out my pink pliers, y'all. That's manly. Look at that shot, though. That was a. That's your first it's time. Shot. That placement is. Precise. It only took two. Why does it sound like we're stuck on a log? Because we are. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably like what the third time we've run aground. <laughs> All right, so. Anytime you guys hear that grinding noise, that's my power poles going up. They're not grinding, but right here in this box, you can't see it now. Are my pumps? You'll probably need the pliers. Yeah. I'll twist that. You just twist the head off? Yeah. I'm trying to get us off this log. It sounds terrible. There we go. That's how I control. Nighty night. That's a wrap. Oh, he's gonna pump bear. There's turtles everywhere. Look at this one over here. Oh, that's so cool. A little nursery for him, I guess. Mm -hmm. How cool. I think it's a, I don't know, baby loggerhead or baby green. Whoa. Easy killer. <laughs> we need to do a bully netting. Blue, ooh, ooh. Bully crab, bully net, and blue crab. Dang it, this new sweater I got, the sleeves don't go up high. It's getting swole. Oh, yeah, definitely time to get bit. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Here we go. They're fast. Hopefully he doesn't take off his own claws. Ah. Oh yeah. He's got a barnacle on him. Oh yeah. Oh no, don't kiss me. <laughs> Look at that big joker. And that's about as blue as they get. Look how pretty he is. He's so pretty. Can we keep him? I think Frank needs a friend. He might whoop up on old Frank. He definitely does his curls. Boy, if I knew I could catch 20 more of y'all, I would eat you. But look at the toady. Right there, creeping. See him? Yeah. We need to come back here and do a seinen video. Get the toes. Bite me. <laughs> look at him, he's on defense. Right. All right, let's go get something else. Let's go. birthday's not until August though. You guys, tonight we've been out just riding around for a couple hours, goofing off, letting the tide come in to where the water will get clear. I thought we saw a, tra a lot of trash the other day. Dude, at night it's insane. It's everywhere. Here's a fresh batch of balloons. Uh, just what I needed. Like, I don't know what the point of these was. I understand that it was to give somebody a happy birthday gift, but really balloons, and then to turn them loose. Like, They're just pointless. It's literally pointless. Hey! Oh. It wouldn't break, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. All right, so the tide is right. Unfortunately for us, the tide is right now. Let's pop these balloons and gig some sheep's head. 
Yeah, look at this snook right here in front of you. Look, right here to your right. Look how big he is. Oh boy, look at that sheep's head though right there. You jerk, I didn't see you. Look at this right here, babe, right here in front of us. That's a redfish. Yeah, big nice. redfish. That's, That's nice either detail. a redfish or a giant trout. That's got a big tail. Oh, look right here though. Oh! He squirted out. <laughs> he said, see you later. He's like, y'all got any of them outrigger lights for me? <laughs> I could use one. Those herons are so pretty. The water is definitely clearing up. You guys have never came out at night before and done this? you have clear water you really should because you'll see things you don't see during the daytime that tree right there is stacked full of sheep's head but it's about seven foot deep which is too deep to be trying to gig them in we're coming up to this little lagoon right here and there might be a big sting right here okay. it goes from six inches of water to seven foot of water real fast the wind is blowing dead out of the southeast, which is terrible for... Terrible for gigging as I, as I gig a fish. God, I didn't even get a barb in him. You know what's funny is like they have stripes like convicts and then that kind of looks like jail bars and they just escaped. Here's more than likely why. You see how I bent it? I wonder how you bend it. How did you bend it? Let's let's roll a little quick clip real quick. Right here is how I bent it. Ooh, you caught it! Yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. That's what's going down. Where? I'm missing it. Me too. That's a snapper. Oh, that little. Yeah, what is that? Little, little one? Wow. Oh! oh. <laughs> what was that? He darted before I even threw it. <laughs> Listen to the birds in there. Look at that big one right there. Look at the sea turtles. The sea turtles are always on this one. See? Stick them. Get in there good. You got him. You got him. Hold him over the boat. Hold him over the oh. water. All right. Cooler's open. There we go. Oh, there you go. Kelly, let me see that camera. Yep. Let's roll. Sea turtles everywhere. This is like a baby sea turtle sanctuary. There's one there. Here comes another one here. A fish? What is that? A baby Bermuda chub. What up, dude? Look at him, though. All right, you ready? There's one more sheep's head here. Structure, yeah, there he is, right there. Hold on, I'll get you right on him. Let me put the tower poles down. Got him. Ooh, 
You said you wanted fish to eat. We ain't going hungry tonight. Whoa! <laughs> recording, babe? Yep. Oh, he's cold. Right there is a perfect example of why power poles are so valuable. I stopped this about five foot from hitting the mangroves. We just had a massive cluster mess right there. There were sheep sitting. Did you get yours? I got mine. Sheep's head everywhere, and of course, I missed mine. I'm hungry. Me too. See, how are you hungry? You got all that trail mix. <laughs> so now I can turn my trolling motor on pick my power poles up, we're good. Oh. You comfortable back there? Yep. All right, you guys, this is what my boat looks like from the outside with the lights on. I run with the trolling motor up like that so I don't have to lay it down every single time. That light up there is obviously how you guys see what we're doing on the bow. But right now, the wind has kicked our butt. It's blowing southeast, which is the worst direction for wind here in Stewart. We're going to load this thing up and head in. You had fun? Tons of fun. Let's do it again soon. <laughs> our night has consisted of getting stuck on sandbars the wind blowing but you know what we're alive we're healthy it's 2021 we made it through 2020 you guys that's that's a bonus right there we'll see y'all back at the house right now i told y'all i'd give you the rundown this is my gator pro gig this gig actually floats it's also my son jake's favorite gig this is my outrigger outdoors gig it's really, really good for barracudas. I don't like it that much for sheep's head, but for flounder and barracudas, it's actually really nice. So let me give you the rundown on my lights. The reason I have so many is for this right here. I didn't want a generator on my boat. I didn't want to have big light bars because if I break one light bar that's the whole length, I'm done. Those are my white lights. That's for clear water. Those are my yellow lights. That's for dirty water. I went with this because I have the ultimate power. Now come right here and let's show them this. So for all my lights and my trolling motor, I'm only running three regular 12 volt batteries. I can put this boat in the water right at dark and I can run till daylight the next morning and pretty much never die. If I'm running in strong current, possibly only because of the trolling motor, but I've never had them even get dim yet. That's why I went with these outrigger lights. Everything that you see on this boat, you can go in the link underneath this video and find and probably even save money with a promo code. I've got two six gallon gas tanks. If one goes empty, I unplug it, plug it into that one, the full one. Here's my switches. This is my trolling motor plug. The trolling motor is sitting on a portable mount. If I want to take it off, if I don't need it, unplug it, good to go. This right here is my hatch for all my stuff. My extra frog togs, my tackle. Always bring extra remotes, extra power pole remotes, thermocell, rain jackets, batteries. Anything you could possibly need, bring it. Over here is my rod locker. Right now I don't have much in it, but I can hold six or seven of my favorite rods, either bait casters or spinning rods nothing will break. You close the lid, these latches are crazy strong. Kelly will tell you they almost break her finger every time she does it, but all you got to do is pop it open and don't get your thumb in the way. My seats, I went with Millennium because they make the most comfortable tree stand in the world. When they came out with a boat seat, it was a no-brainer. In the front hatch, I have a storage pocket with another one of these in there 
and another mount for up front. I just got a little roto mold cooler. That's one thing that these smaller boats lack is room, but they're small, so you can't have a bunch. So we bring this little cooler. Here's the important box, though. Come over here and show them this. I've got both my power pole pumps, my fire extinguisher, sunscreen, Danko pliers, some jigs. This is my workhorse. I can't let anything happen to that box. All right, so on to the motor. This is my 40 horse Pro Drive. It doesn't have instant reverse, but it's got full power reverse, meaning I can pull my truck out of the mud with this boat in reverse, and that's five seconds to get it from reverse to forward. All right, so on to the back of the boat. These are my power poles. To me, I don't know how I ever used to fish without them. That boat ain't going anywhere. You put it around your neck. A lot of times it'll be under my shirt and you're like, what is he grabbing? That's my power poles. So with this remote and this remote, I can sit in that back seat. My kids can fish up front. Kelly can bow fish. We can do whatever we want. And I can sit in that seat and control the whole entire boat. So the last thing that you won't see on very many duck boats like this is this pole. This pole used to be this tall and came over because it was meant to hold on to while you're running this motor. I said, I need something to film with and that can cast light down on us. So, ProDrive built me this awesome pole. It takes one second to take it down and we're off running. That's it. As quick as I could, my boat's covered in sea deck. This stuff is so nice, especially in aluminum boats. It cuts all the sound. My airboat has it, my bay boat has it. Really, that's about all. I've got one battery in the back, so four batteries total, 12 gallons of gas, power poles, my outrigger lights, 24 volt trolling motor. I've got push poles and I've got anchors. That's one more thing I wanted to show you real, real quick, real quick. All pro drive boats come with these. Boom, you're done. They're quick, they're fast. I do like these, but nothing compares to power poles, period, just for the easiness. Now, I know that was a super fast rundown, but YouTube's all about time. I can't make two hour long videos, so I talk fast, show it to you. Here's this big, beautiful Stingray. First thing I'm gonna do is cut this off, because that's going in the crab traps. It's not edible, it's not really good for anything. Come right here. This is about where the meat is. My kids start showing in the fair tomorrow in Martin County. So we're getting ready for all of that. And I edited another video today and I've been working on this one. And we're gonna go inside and cook this awesome stingray. We'll see y'all in the kitchen. Stingray have such unique meat. There's nothing else that looks anything like it. Doesn't look like a flounder. Doesn't look like any of the other flat fish. I guess it just looks like stingray. I wanna get the skin off, get this meat off the bone and marinate it because we're gonna actually cook it tomorrow. One thing I will say is stingray has a lot of like byproduct there's not as much meat as you would think and you might ask well why'd you kill it well for one there is so many stingrays it's insane and nobody hunts them nobody har harvests them and they're awesome bait and they're awesome food what i do with this one because this isn't my first time cleaning one hopefully y'all have already saw my other catch clean and cook on a stingray and I've also done one on a cow nose ray. But we're gonna do it again because I have cooked snapper a thousand times and I almost learn something new every time I do it again. So that's my goal right here. Just like that. 
There's your two pieces and that's all bone and it's bone shaped just like the little ridges you see. It's like one big old rib cage. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Take the skin off. Look at that. Looks like a scallop shell. Like the same color almost it. So I just made a little marinade. One lime, one lemon, and some olive oil. I think I'm gonna put it on the grill tomorrow after it marinates overnight with a little bit of salsa verde, make some stingray tacos. Other than the meat looking weird, pretty clean meat. I mean, it just looks like spaghetti. It's so weird. Stingray spaghetti. Stingray spaghetti. But can y'all smell that? So all I did was salt and pepper, garlic salt, put it on the grill for I think about 15 minutes at 350 degrees, and that's the final product. Once again, you've heard me say it in videos before this one, I don't know how anybody compares stingray to scallops. Does any of that look like a scallop to you? That actually, you know what that looks like? It looks like ground beef. No, it looks like a frog's foot. Wow. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Now, here is the moment of truth. I don't even eat fish that much, but y'all watch this. Dun, dun, dun. Trying to cleanse my body here. <laughs> Take you a good big bite. Uh, what, what's on it? Salt and pepper? And garlic. That's it. That's so good, it's insane. The garlic salt does it, but it's actually good. Can Redneck have some? He doesn't eat fish. I bet you he'll eat this. Let's see. Mm. Oh, he ate it. You know what, the marinade, the lime. But as a fish, as the it. texture of that fish, is that not good? Yeah, it's good, I think. Because you did this in one of your last videos and it was a little bit tougher, I think. But since you marinated it for a couple days with that lime and ginger, it falls apart. Literally, that is so good. You just got to get past what it looks like, you know. It doesn't look like a scallop? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is so, so good. Big shout out to whoever that is. Whatever company you are, you are so good. I just ate some with that on there and it even made it better. I don't know how it got better than that, but that chili sauce made it even better. So right now, Kelly's outside finishing up one of her videos. That's a makeover video of the back patio. I'm getting ready to go do a crappie fishing video and a crappie tournament this weekend. But right now it's time to get up out of here in this video and get the heck out of shape.